yesterday didn't quite go as planned. I obviously, well, here's the rundown. Basically my meeting from yesterday at 10, which I was meant to go to and I didn't go to because I ended up in the emergency room was moved to today. I went there, then I went to the IC right after to go see my grandpa. Um, and now I have yesterday's work plus today's, but I didn't manage to get stuff done because you know I've been running around. I had to go that have that have that meeting. It went great, and I think it's been it an incredibly eventful day because I had that meeting that went super well. Then I missed the call with a client because I was in the ICU and I forgot to move it. And I had to go like, you know, the, the IC has a specific visitation period. I can't just go whenever I want. And I, and I, you know, I forgot to move that call. That's my bad. And then the, the engineer I hired for this like specific Bluetooth thing says he can't figure it out. So now I got to do that as well as everything else on my plate. I also didn't manage to record anything yesterday because by the time I got back, I was so, I was so tired. I was exhausted and you know, I just slept. So I got to record stuff, develop stuff, review stuff. I got calls to do. And tomorrow I got a bunch of calls. I got some calls that I got to move because it's during the ICU visitation period. And you know, like I got to go there. Uh, I, I haven't had time to work out. I wanted to film stuff that, that didn't happen as well. Um, but I'm gonna, gonna make it happen one way or another. Um, yeah, so I have a call in roughly 15, 20 minutes now. I'm gonna go prepare for that and that's the update for the time being. Uh, I'd love to, yeah, I mean, I just haven't had any time to think, just like go, go, go. Um, I wanna catch up on things. I have some reflections about hiring, like some stuff, a lot of stuff going through my mind, to be honest, just zero, zero time right now to share. Cause I gotta, I gotta go prepare for this call. Um, and I got to make it, I got also got to make a deck today because of the, the, well, the meeting went super well. I have a new prospect, like we're pretty, I'd say I'm con relatively confident about closing the deal, but that means I got to put together this deck in addition. So I already had a lot to do this morning, but now beyond the stuff that I have from yesterday and today, I'm just like my normal, a lot of stuff to do. I now have this deck that I also have to make. I have to make a recording with that deck, present it, whatever. And then I also have to fix this Bluetooth stuff because that guy gave, basically gave up. Um, he said he'll help me debug it with what he knows. So that'll be some help. But like, basically, you can't, you know, he can't do it without me at the moment. So just not the, you know, I, I just didn't need another 365 things on my plate. But yeah. Anyway, uh, life goes on. New deal. I want to keep, keep my clients happy, so I'm going to put in those extra hours trying to debug this Bluetooth stuff. If it doesn't work, though, I mean, what? I mean, I, I don't know that there's a whole lot that I can do. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's the situation. Uh, I th I'd say like if I, I, I'm going to try and as much as possible just debug for iOS, that's the priority. And if, if I don't figure that out by end of day tomorrow, I'm just going to go ahead and have a difficult conversation with them and basically be like, hey guys, I don't think we are going to be the right people to finish it or whatever it is. Just it's going to have to be a bit of a difficult conversation and explain to them. Yeah, like I, I can't keep committing to it, especially because they're, 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 they're not paying us right now. Um, so you know, I can't do that at the cost of my other projects as well. So yeah, that's uh, the update for today. And uh, hopefully I record something later, but proper video and a little update. I don't know yet, but I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon at home. It's like 4.30 now. So just the uh, rest of my time will be uh, working basically. Um, <clears throat> I am at the moment feeling very, very hyper, very like ADHD. In not a very good way. I just made myself a coffee because I'm gonna have to stay up. Um, I just spent the last little like I was on a call at seven. I I walked my dog and then I I was just uh, honestly sat on the couch for a bit. It's just been like I've got a shit ton of work to do and I was doing some uh, thinking though. And there are two things that uh, that I was thinking a little bit about. First one was there's this there's a there's a client for which. Um, you know, th basically this particular client, they, p they pay me like, they pay me very well, but they require daily calls. 
And the daily calls aren't short. They're not 15, 20 minutes. They're not stand up calls. They're like, you know, hour long at least usually. Um, and those calls like are generally obstructive to my day in general. And because of different time zone issues, they end up being at five to 6 PM, which in my opinion kind of sucks as a time to have like blocked out every day. Um, I'd, I'd much prefer something earlier in the afternoon if possible. And, um, you know, like obviously like, like I have commitments to my company every day, 11 AM, I have a stand up. these things, those things don't bother me at all. At the end of the day, I'm trying to build the company into something that can run on its own, all these things. Um, and sometimes I, I have like earlier today, I was just thinking, I was kind of some part of me, there was some part of my brain, which is entertaining the possibility of, of like dropping the project at some point, because I don't want to have that kind of commitment, I, you know, and, and to sustain that is, is a lot of effort, whatever. Uh, what I realized is like, I don't know, like, I think, I think it's good practice because it, I mean, it, it forces that consistency to, I mean, but to be fair, I'm doing that in my own company, right? Um, I don't know. There, there's some part of me which doesn't like the idea that these are calls, which I can't really, I can't really move them because they're scheduled by the client. And, uh, I mean, I, I almost effectively operate as a, as a team member there. Um, but you know, it's, it's a special client personally. So, um, yeah, but just to be fair, I have been in a previous situation where I had a similar thing and basically I could commit and it would take up a lot of my hours and whatever. And I decided not to do that out of the, not fear, but wanting to preserve that freedom, essentially. Basically, I chose to preserve my freedom over um, like the financial gain and experience. Well, I, mean, I, I learned other I, you know, experience in other ways, but I think I'm rambling a lot. And I don't think, and I think this is very much a byproduct of like the kind of state of mind that I'm in where just my head's all over the place, not focused in the slightest, uh, like where my mind's, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that means I gotta, like, I might meditate a little bit, take a shower, but I have to figure out, cause I have this very kind of scattered energy at the moment and not, not in a good way, not in the kind of way that helps me focus and work and get things done. So I got to figure that out. And um, anyway, my reflection was just, there was some inkling of me, which will wanted was, you know, not liking the fact that this project is keeping me relatively tied down because I can't hand it off to someone else either. Um, and I, you know, I don't want that. But then again, anything that I build, I, you know, I want to build large things. Any of those things require consistency, right? Like a mediocre plan for a decade beats a great plan for a day or whatever it is, right? So just being forced to practice that consistency, I think, is in, is in some way useful. And it, like it actually doesn't remove from my freedom that much. It just requires that I plan things a little bit. Um, but it is interesting just to observe my own kind of visceral, re visceral reaction to have that freedom not taken away, but at least jeopardized. Um, Obviously, within my own company, like I have full freedom in terms of I will suffer the consequences of my actions, right? So, you know, like if I don't do anything, then you, no work comes in, no money gets made, and I'm going to be living in a pretty bad situation. But there's something about that control, which is an incredibly like freeing feeling, um, which which I definitely find that I, I, I do crave. But um, I also think that comes with seniority at any company. And I, and I think it is, it's misleading to believe that it's only, you know, only in your own company because it's not, because when you get to a certain level of seniority in other companies as well, you can come in t-shirts and shorts because you've done your years in the suit and tie. And, you know, in a large company, you do your years in suit and tie, and then you can wear t-shirts and, and shorts and set the rules. In a small company, you can always set the rules, but you're going to be, you're going to be working you know when when the company has a problem and there's nobody else to solve it it's like you have this filter for the uh, elon musk i think puts it nicely but you have this filter for like all the worst problems in the company because when nobody else wants to solve it the only part like it comes down to you so there's a unique filter for all the worst problems like either way you pay the price um so don't you know don't get it twisted and think that it's better when the grass is always greener on the other side you know um and 
I don't, I don't think nine to five should be labeled as bad. Um, this is a general sentiment that I feel. And the other reflection I had was on, uh, I can't remember now. Um, my dog was looking at herself. I'm sitting right under me, so I can't put my legs down. I like, can't move them too much, it's a bit annoying. Um, I think the other reflection I was having was, was it around work? Oh, around actors. Um, there, I saw some reel or YouTube short or something about some guy talking about um, Joaquin Felix's performance in uh, Joker. And... Um, Basically, the summary of like the, what he was saying in, in the in the in the reel or the short was um, the guy was so immersed in his role, he would do things off script that were just perfectly in character. And he like Joaquin Felix, the way he does things is he just he lives as that person. So you, he doesn't break character when he goes home, when he's on set. It doesn't matter. He it, he 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 becomes that character, and. I think there's something to be learned there in terms of like every individual has the ability. I don't think this is unique to actors. I think I think actors are the ones who obviously train it because they do it for a living. But every every individual has the ability to almost shape themselves into a caricature that they of their choosing effectively. All this to say like if you build a character that you want to be and you decide that you're you're going to act as that character and you act as that character every day. Like eventually you become that person. And I don't I don't support the idea that this is like being fake or you know you're you're acting every day and this is a bad thing. It's like no, because that's that's part of like that's part of just the the way the world works, right? At the end of the day, if you want to become healthy, just act like a healthy person. Act just be an actor. Be an actor for 6 months. Act like a healthy person. Eventually you'll get used to it and it will become that that what initially was acting will become that you and this is i think i think joaquin felix mentioned that he was you know like some of these actors who go all the way on these like very extreme roles sometimes come out with psychological trauma because they they became that person who has the trauma and so they embodied that so much they they had some residue of it when they kind of tried to return to their previous role you know as as whatever whatever their kind of personal character was if you will and you know you don't want to go you you don't want to you basically you don't want to play extreme characters but you can just make the character that you want and play that role and it is absolutely a possibility for you to play it day in day out i just i categorically deny that 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 might be impossible because actors do it for a living and i think anybody can do that I think it takes time it takes skills to learn and you know there's there's plenty of other ways to change there's all kinds of things about habits and environments and put yourself in the right circle of people etc cetera, etc cetera. but it just made me kind of really i think acknowledge that and and actually to be honest i think i did that a lot when i was younger i used to spend a lot of time idealizing movie characters and I would uh, just, I, I just spent a lot of time thinking about them. I think about different movie scenes and the characters who I admired the most were always the kind of like quiet, but very smart ones, that type of genius underdog that, you know, that, that was, that was the type of character that I came to admire a lot, whatever. And I found that as I started to identify, I just act in accordance with that more and more, you know, until I became the best in my school and, and, and I was very kind of academically nerdy and stuff like that. And and I think to, to a large extent, it's because I started, basically there's there's a number of qualities that I wanted, that I identified with in these characters and I wanted to exercise in my own life and things like that. And that's to, to a large, I think I think that contributed to a lot of change. You know, obviously I can't account for everything and I, and I can't remember exactly, you know, it's, everything's a little fuzzy. Um, you know childhood memories like 
but it just yeah i think i think maybe it's an underrated thing people say to visualize i think there, there's this idea that you should visualize your goals visualize yourself achieving the goals visualize your visualize yourself in that mansion with that porsche with the this with the that like like relax that's not you know like the the winners and losers have the same goal uh the the winners if you look at a 100 meter race the winners and losers they all want to get to the finish line as fast as possible there's no difference in the goal the goal the goal stays the same people who want to get rich the poor ones and the rich ones like the the difference like the the goal is not what makes the difference and so if you just visualize the goal i don't think i don't think that in and of itself does anything i think what the guys who do that quote unquote visualization stuff right i think what they're doing is they're visualizing the person who does win. That's what they're visualizing. They're not, they're not looking at the goal. They're looking at who's that individual who wins? What is that archetype? And how do you emulate that as much as possible? That I think is far more powerful. And I don't know that, that clip just made me think a little bit about it. And, um, I don't know. I think it's something I've thought a lot about before. And it's not easy um, when you visualize the kind of like there, I don't know, there have been situations before where I've been like, yeah, this isn't the type of thing that that ideal person would do, but I'm doing it anyway. And I just recognize and I sit with it. And sometimes I'll, you know, I'll still do that thing that I'm not meant to, you know, but yeah, it's not, it's not a catch all. It's hard. It's, I didn't say, you know, I, I, that, that isn't to say it's easy. I'm just, I don't know. I was just thinking about that. I feel like sleeping. I feel like, I don't know, anything but work, uh, which isn't a particularly good feeling for somebody who has so much to do. Oh my God. <laughs> my developer, my junior guy is hating TypeScript. Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and try and sort this out for him. I got so much review work. I really gotta get out of the development side and finding. But I don't over hire. I don't know, there's this really fine line to tread that I'm trying to figure out and it's not particularly easy. On the one, on the one hand, I need to get, like the more, the more management stuff I do, the less making stuff I'll be able to do. And these these schedules are very at odds with each other. I don't know who it was who wrote the manager and maker schedule of Peter Thiel or Gra uh, Graham Stephan, something like that. Great, Graham. Paul Graham, not Graham Stephan. Sorry, that's the finance guy on YouTube. Paul Graham, the startups guy. Or Peter Thiel, I don't know. Um, but one of them wrote the manager versus the maker schedule. If you haven't read this, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go Google it right now, leave this video, go read that essay and then come back. But the idea in short is a manager basically has lots of little meetings. You reply to this message, that message, you have a lot of different reports. You've got a lot of meetings and whatever. And then the maker schedule is you have large large blocks of time that are just dedicated like focused blocks of time for a single particular task now i think silicon valley overvalues the maker schedule because you know you, your prize for if you're a good engineer and things like that at the end of the day the ma maker or manager schedule they're both good they're both just suited to very different types of work and different types of roles obviously that's that's the entire idea that's why one's a manager one's a maker right um they're but they're also they're very much at odds with each other they, that's i think the entire premise of the essay is basically it's very hard to if you're a maker and you're on a manager schedule that will suck for you um and managers i don't think can really fit into maker schedules or at least that's my that's my personal um interjection uh, my personal opinion like and this is this is one of the things I'm struggling with at the moment because I run honestly more of a manager schedule and I don't have much of a choice.
because, because of time zones and because some clients want meetings every day or they want a meeting on this particular day or that particular day, it's very hard for me to clear out specific days. And this is something that I'm working on. So for example, I might go ahead and decide that I want meetings only to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays or Mondays and Tuesdays. I don't know what the optimal choice for that is, but I think I should choose a day and avoid calls on the other days. But even so, it's very challenging. Oh, I got a book in a call with, uh, oh my God. Okay. Um, it's, it's very, very challenging to, to basically avoid my, my, my calls being at random times. And so that makes it hard to run a maker schedule. And as long as I'm an engineer, I need part of that make, like I need that maker schedule. And like right now I have a block of time and I'm going to have to whatever. Um, but I enjoy the manager schedule, the truth be told, I enjoy running around between meetings, the busyness. I also enjoy maker, you know, it's just different seasons, different schedules, whatever. Um, but running both of them at the same time doesn't work. I, uh, I accidentally paused that video. And, uh, I also realize how rambly I am at the minute. I think that makes it terrible for me to reflect and speak on things. I think it's a lot less useful and. A lot more challenging because I have to sit through my own ramblings if I ever watch this back. Anyway, my point being, I kind of want new hands on deck because I have too much, in, like I, I have extra engineering stuff. But at the same time, if I over oh, if I over index on the number of hands I bring on deck, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna be stuck with extra payroll that I don't have. You know, I don't have work for people. Um, I could build in-house projects and stuff like that. Definitely an option, but. I also want to make sure the next person we find and bring in house is like really talented and a uh, really good engineer. So I have to find somebody, I think I'm going to just going to look for people in a particular budget. If I can fit them in that budget. Great. Um, if not, no worries. And I'm probably just going to explain to people we do it like, you know, basically what we do is a trial month to see how's their fit in the company. I mean, it's a paid trial month, not, not like any free or anything like that. Um, not, <laughs> we don't support free labor. Well, no, actually, I do support free labor. Uh, if you're starting out, go work for free. I do actually support that. That's what I did. Um, don't don't come don't come like attacking me for saying that. Uh, but I I very much did that when I was starting out as well. Um, I worked on so many projects for free for quote unquote sweat equity for just nothing for just shits and giggles sometimes. Um, it's part of the part of the journey if you if you're uh, curious about development stuff. But anyway, I'm going to have some conversations and see just what are the engineers that we have. I think we will need some extra hands next month, so we're, we're probably just going to expand the team. And uh, and I think if we run into this, like, yeah, it'll be, then, then hopefully I'll have the time to make sure that at no point are we basically sitting, with, sitting around with nothing to do. Um, this is one of the challenges is balancing because if you if you're always full of work, any new leads have to wait a long time and that's not good for them, right? As you want to be able to move quickly, otherwise contracts go to other people. On the other hand, if you have engineers sitting, you know, ready to start working, you're while they're not working, you're going to be paying extra payroll. So how do you strike a balance between those two? One of the biggest challenges if you run a, a development in that company. So anyway, um, I'm going to go focus. I am, I'm, I'm feeling really tired. It's 9 p.m. It's 9, 10, 9, 15 almost. And I, I really gotta, gotta double down and um, just see what I can get done before 12, before one. I'm gonna push for that. I will have to be doing some development. So that's it, yeah. It's now been like an hour since I recorded that last um, video, even though, I mean, I'm in the same place, so maybe it just looks like it is a continuous shot or like was, was just right before this, but no, it's, it's been like an hour and I haven't done anything productive. I just honestly, I don't know, I've just been, I texted people and then I, I searched some stuff up and then I kind of organized a little bit and then. It's, it's the kind of like cleaning your room when you got homework to do kind of thing where you, you're not actually being useful. You're just doing other things that your brain likes to consider productive and not proud of that, not happy, not something I want to encourage at all. Actually something I want to fight. And, um, honestly, I know that will bite me in the ass, but, um, 
I was just one of the things. One of the things I was discussing was basically spinning my videos into shorts because I want to double down on content, and I'm thinking, how can I do more? Whatever, whatever. And you know, I was asking my uh, my editor, oh, what is there something I could do where I can you know, like clip these sh vlogs or, or my videos and make a bunch of shorts out of them? And yes, while I can do that. A better way to double down on content is just do more of what's working before you start doing other stuff. Just do more of what's already working. And these vlogs, I mean, they're not they're not garnering you know crazy numbers or anything like that. Uh, they're very much personal reflections more than anything. But the videos that I made, kind of quote unquote, for the internet, have actually been performing. And when I say performing, I mean, you know, getting like a couple hundred views, like five hundred to a thousand, and. For somebody who's just like basically, ah, well, I'm just starting my channel, and I th I think that's basically like those are getting me growth. They are bringing me um, traction and things like that, and and I want to double down on content and like I should do more of the thing that's working rather than try and explore new things and put more money and whatever. Like before before basically, I just had to remind myself a little bit. I get very excited to think about new things, and I think this is a common trap for me and. I had this a year ago. I still have this now, and I think if I watch myself in two, you know, if I, if I watch this two years down the line, five years down the line, like I think, you just get better at it over time. But you have to keep reminding yourself, like, focus on what's working. Double down on that before you start worrying about everything else. If you try and start, if you basically add too much stuff, it becomes unsustainable. And as soon as it's unsustainable, and and like if I were to do shorts, like I'd, I'd get somebody to edit them for me. I'm not going to do it myself because I, I'm no editor at all. If I paid for that, that would add to my bill and I don't want that to become unsustainable. And I realize, like, even right now, I'm not filming at the pace that I want to be. Like I want to be, you know, filming consistently on a week by week basis. And sometimes that's delayed and that's not good enough. And, and the thing that I realized is before I even think about repurposing and everything else, I have to do what I'm planning to do right now correct. I gotta double down on that first. And then and then build around it. But I can't like I have to stop myself from from scaling too quickly before I have a solid enough foundation. This is the thing that I'm trying to remind myself and just make sure I don't like I very easily get over enthusiastic about new things, and this is the part. This, this is the thing that I have to make sure I don't. I don't let that. I don't basically get in over my head, and make sure I like. I'd rather execute the mediocre plan for a decade. The you know, I, Bruce Lee or whatever. He's he's the guy who said like, it's not the man who's practiced ten thousand kicks once that I'm afraid of. It's the man who's practiced one kick ten thousand times. Same thing. Same thing applies. Like. I just have to focus and double down on the things that I'm already doing. I just get better at that rather than trying to do 16 different new things. Um, but you, you have to tread that fine line because you also got to try new things. And this is, this is the, the dichotomy that I've been managing and struggling with for the longest time, even in the business side of things. I kind of want to pivot. I want to try a new business model, but also I want to practice that one cake 10,000 times. So. Both things are at odds, both are true. You have to just manage as best you can. I think right now, in this particular case, like I should just stick to what's working and double down on that. But sometimes you do have to try something new or you'll never know. And striking that balance, I think, is one of the largest challenges in building a business because you will face that constantly. The, the, the opportunity of expansion into new territory and the threat that brings to your focus. Both things are incredibly important. That decision, I, I do not believe it'll get any easier because Hormozy calls it the red dress syndrome or whatever. And that will continue to happen. But the thing is sometimes going for that shiny opportunity is the right call. Sometimes you never know when that is. And if you always go for it, you'll mess up. If you never go for it, you can miss a lot of stuff. Um, at least this is my thing. Like I, yeah, I mean, biggest, biggest lesson I've, I've had by far in, uh, in general from business, but you you don't really solve problems in business. You, you manage dichotomies for the most part. You only pro solve problems for your customers. That's the only thing you do. That's the only kind of problem you're solving. Everything else is managing a dichotomy because uh, there, there, there are so many principles that are like both true, but at opposite ends of a spectrum. They oppose each other, but 
you have to balance that. Um, anyway, that's something that I was just thinking about. And then I realized stop being an idiot, just go film something instead of thinking about how you're going to do shorts and thinking about a short strategy because you haven't even filmed this week. And, uh, yeah, before you think about how you're adding to your strategy, how about you execute on the one you already have? So, um, God, I need more work for my assistant to do as well. Hey, I just haven't been on top of that. And um, yeah, if I add a new engineer to my team, my payroll is going to grow. That's gonna that's gonna be that's, that's terrifying, but also exciting to some extent. Anyway, gonna go upstairs, change my environment, see if that helps a little bit. Might have some more food. Sit down, work uh, two three hours, just crank out as much as I can. Now it's 2 a.m. and I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna make everything work because it's 2.30 in the morning and I wanted to do a bunch of development work, but I haven't been able to finish what everything I had. I'm really, really regretting, like right now, I am hitting myself for not starting my work earlier because I could have moved so much stuff forward. Like I, I'm genuinely on such a time crunch, it makes such a big difference. Tomorrow morning, I have a call at 8.30, at 10, 10.30, 11, 11.30, potentially 12, probably not. I have to go to the ICU, obviously, um, to visit my grandpa during the visit hours that he has. I have a call at 3, and then another call at 5. And I, I... What the hell? Like, basically, I'm thinking, like, I wanted to just push through the night and do the development work, but... I'm weighing up the costs. Like, if I do the dev work now, because I still have to do a proposal, send that off, uh, plan some video stuff. So that's going to take me at least another hour. It's 2.30 now, 3.30. Maximum was thinking it's five hours on the good side. Uh, five hours, I'm already going to be deprived, like sleep deprived. It's already going to be, you know, it's not, it's not deadly kind of, quote unquote, like, like if I sleep two hours, like it, it completely messes up the rest of the day. Like the impact is very big. If I sleep five, it hurts, but it's not, you know, devastating, uh, like in terms of a blow to the productivity, the whole system. Um, and I wanted to push through and I was thinking, you know, just, oh, I'm going to push through tonight and make it happen. But now I'm seeing things and I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking my time is probably better spent just doing the proposal, the video plans now, going to sleep. And then pushing the development work in the, in between the slots that I can tomorrow as much as possible. Problem is it's going to be very interrupted. That's, that's the part which I'm really not looking forward to. It's very like, do some now, do some here, do some there. And that is awful for any engineer. It's incredibly challenging to work like that. Um, but I think that's my best shot because. The other option is, is like, you know, in another hour, I'm not going to be able to do everything I need done. Not, I can't even speak. Um, but I'm not going to be able to do everything I need to be uh, doing, like, in terms of development. So I'm just going to do the proposal and try to wrap it up as fast as possible. I'm going to try speed run it, see if I can do it in half an hour. That would save me a lot of pain. Yeah, I'm rushing to get stuff done because I want to get stuff done like before Friday. I want next week to be chill because um, I'm in Madeira. I don't, I don't want to be running around with backlog. So it's going to be a huge push. Like I'm trying to, to be honest, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to like do extra dev work for next week now so that I don't have to do as much next week. So basically I'll like save it on my laptop and then just push it as, you know, as I go through next week and just save a bunch of time. That's my plan right now. So I'm going to push to make that happen as much as possible. I think I can just try to focus for a bit. That's it. That's it. Tomorrow's going to be incredibly full day i think it'll be exciting end of the day i'm gonna crash but it'll be really nice that's the plan at the moment so i'm gonna go ahead and get to that proposal now 
Now it's 2 a.m. and I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna make everything work because it's 2.30 in the morning and I wanted to do a bunch of development work, but I haven't been able to finish what everything I had. I'm really, really regretting, like right now, I am hitting myself for not starting my work earlier because I could have moved so much stuff forward. Like I, I'm genuinely on such a time crunch. It makes such a big difference. Tomorrow morning, I have a call at 8.30, at 10, 10.30, 11, 11.30, potentially 12, probably not. I have to go to the ICU, obviously, um, to visit my grandpa during the visit hours that he has. I have a call at 3 and then another call at 5. And I... What the hell? Like, basically, I'm thinking, like, I wanted to just push through the night and do the development work, but... I'm weighing up the costs, like, if I do the dev work now, because I still have to do a proposal, send that off, uh, plan some video stuff, so that's going to take me at least another hour. It's 2.30 now, 3.30, maximum I'm sleeping is 5 hours on the good side. Uh, 5 hours, I'm already going to be deprived, like, sleep deprived, it's already going to be, you know, it's not, it's not deadly, kind of quote unquote like like if i sleep two hours like it, it completely messes up the rest of the day like the impact is very big if i sleep five it hurts but it's not you know devastating uh, like in terms of a blow to the productivity of the whole system um and i wanted to push through and i was thinking you know just oh i'm gonna push through tonight and make it happen but now i'm seeing things and i'm i'm looking at it and i'm thinking my time is probably better spent just doing the proposal the video plans now going to sleep and then pushing the development work in the, in between the slots that I can tomorrow as much as possible. Problem is it's going to be very interrupted. That's, that's the part which I'm really not looking forward to. It's very like, do some now, do some here, do some there. And that is awful for any engineer. It's incredibly challenging to work like that. Um, but I think that's my best shot because the other option is, is like, you know, in another hour, I'm not going to be able to do everything I need done. Not, I can't even speak. Um, but I'm not going to be able to do everything I need to be uh, doing, like, in terms of development. So, I'm just going to do the proposal and try to wrap it up as fast as possible. I'm going to try to speed run it, see if I can do it in half an hour. That would save me a lot of pain. Yeah, I'm rushing to get stuff done because I want to get stuff done like before Friday. I want next week to be chill because um, I'm in Medeida. I don't I don't want to be running around with backlog. So it's going to be a huge push. Like I'm trying to, to be honest, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to like do extra dev work for next week now so that I don't have to do as much next week so basically i'll like save it on my laptop and then just push it as you know as i go through next week and just save a bunch of time that's my plan right now so i'm gonna push to make that happen as much as possible i think i can just try to focus for a bit that's it that's it tomorrow's gonna be an incredibly full day. I think it'll be exciting. End of the day, I'm going to crash, but it'll be really nice. That's the plan at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and get to that proposal now.